Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a $98 HP Chromebook that I recently picked up from my local Walmart. I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested in picking one up, but we might see more of these on Amazon with Prime Day coming up. So, you know, if you want to wait a little while, you definitely can. They're saying that normal retail price on this is $225, and at a $225 price tag, I'd say that this is an overpriced Chromebook, but at $98, this actually might make sense to some people. In this video, we're going to check out the performance, we'll test out some video playback on this unit, we'll test a couple native Android games, and I definitely want to get into some emulation with this because that's where it might make sense to some people, especially a lot of my viewers out there. I can tell you right now that this does offer better performance than the Raspberry Pi 4 is putting out when it comes to just native desktop usage, emulation, and gaming. And one of the best things about this cheap Chromebook is it is one that does support Google Play, so we can install Android apps, and we can also enable the Linux terminal and install Linux apps on this Chromebook. It's been a while since I've messed around with a lower cost Chromebook on the channel, I figured it was about time, and especially given this price, I really couldn't pass it up. So this is known as the HP Chromebook 11A G8EE, and this will receive updates for Chrome up till 2026. For the CPU, we've got an AMD A4-9120C. It's a Bristol Ridge dual core up to 2.4 GHz with built-in Radeon R4 graphics. This is a 3-core variant GPU here up to 600 MHz. 4 GB of RAM, 32 GB of internal storage, plus it does support a micro SD card, an 11.6-inch IPS display at 1366 by 768 AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, they're claiming up to 10 hours of battery life, but continuous use on this, I could definitely see it getting at least 5 hours just straight through, even with that brightness turned all the way up. And like I mentioned, this does support Google Play and Linux. So if you've ever messed around with a Chromebook, you know it's utilizing a very lightweight operating system. Uh, they do have these Chromebooks powered by ARM chips that perform pretty decently, and putting that little AMD A4, even though it's an older CPU, really does help out, especially with that boost up to 2.4 GHz. It's been a pretty snappy experience, especially given the price, and I'm really going to rely on that price a lot here. $98 for a little Chromebook like this isn't bad at all. You can browse the web with it, you can edit your documents, you can check your emails, and since it does have support for Android apps, there's thousands of lightweight apps that will allow you to do all kinds of stuff on this unit. Uh, when I think about these newer Chromebooks with Google Play installed, I really do think about them as Android devices now. And it really did wake up the market a little bit, bringing Google Play over to these Chromebooks. If you ever used a Chromebook before we had access to Google Play on them, you know how kind of barren this really was. So now I wanted to test out a little bit of video playback from YouTube. I just went with a 720p video here. It is running at 60 FPS. We'll turn Stats for Nerds on. And I know it's a bit hard to see here, those drop frames, but at 720, this does really good. Not many drop frames at all. I also tested a couple 1080p videos, and I had definitely more drop frames than I did at 720. But it is possible to play 1080p 60 video on this unit. It's not going to make much of a visual difference, given the display that we have here. So I would kind of just stick it at 720, but it does work. So far, using this as an everyday laptop, not for high-end tasks or anything like that, but, you know, web browsing, email checking, video playback from YouTube, listening to some music, it's worked out much better than I thought it would. Now, in the past, I've tested a couple of these cheaper Chromebooks a couple years ago with lower-end CPUs, and the interface itself was a bit sluggish, but this really isn't that bad, especially given the price point here. Okay, so next thing I wanted to do was check out a little bit of native Android gaming. I've just loaded up Among Us. It's an easier game to run. And I do have an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. I was actually not sure if this game got controller support yet on Android, but as you can see, it is working. And it definitely handles these easier to run Android games quite well. I tested Slither IO, and for that we can get controller support. I also tested Stardew Valley, another one that does support controllers, and Minecraft. With Minecraft, I did have to turn the chunks down to 8, but it was playable. Unfortunately, for the higher-end Android games like PUBG and even Asphalt 9, this was a bit slow. It just didn't handle those native 3D games quite well. There is a way to play higher-end AAA games on a Chromebook, and that's going to be using cloud gaming, whether you want to use GeForce Now, Stadia, or Game Pass. I've got Game Pass going right now with Forza Horizon 5, we're just going to go ahead and stream this game from the cloud. And you can either use the app itself, you can download it from Google Play, 
or you could use the Chrome browser, which isn't officially supported from Microsoft, but it does work, and that's what I'm using right now. This does have AC Wi-Fi built in, so I'm on my 5 GHz network right now. It would have been nice if this had an Ethernet port on the side, but you could always plug in the USB Type-C with an Ethernet adapter if you wanted to. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some emulation. So we've got access to Google Play. We can download a bunch of standalone emulators. And you can set up an emulation front end if you want to. I went with LaunchBox here. Controller works with it. I've imported my games. It downloads my artwork for me. Got a few different themes to work with here. Now this machine isn't going to run PS2 using EtherSX2. And only a handful of GameCube games are going to run at full speed. But everything underneath those two consoles is going to work fine on this machine. You want to go all the way back to Atari 2600, up to PSP, this works out really well. So the first thing we're going to test here is a little bit of Dreamcast. And for this, I'm going to be using RetroArch with the Flycast Core. I did try ReDream. You can install it, but it keeps crashing on me. I was able to get one game to start up and then it would crash. But Flycast and RetroArch does work on this unit. Here we have some Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I've got the FPS listed up in the top right hand corner. Again, we're using RetroArch with Flycast, and these Dreamcast games are going to run at full speed. Moving over to PlayStation 1, using RetroArch with the PC SX Rearm Core. You could also go with Duck Station if you want to, but I already had everything set up here with RetroArch. And PlayStation 1 is going to work out great on this Chromebook. Moving over to some N64, we've got Conker's Bad Fur Day, and for this emulator I'm using Mupin 64 Plus FZ from the Google Play Store. I just really like this emulator, really easy to enable cheats and everything like that. And even with a little bit of an upscale here, N64 is fully playable. And the final thing I tested here was PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulkan backend, 2x resolution. I also tested OpenGL, but it seems that Vulkan does perform better on this Chromebook. Tony Hawk's Underground 2, running great. This is one of those games that runs at 30 FPS. Here's another one for PSP, still at 2x resolution, Tekken 6. So I'm getting really good PSP performance on this system, but it doesn't mean that every single game is going to run at full speed, because when I moved over to Chains of Olympus, it did slow down quite a bit. I tested the OpenGL backend and Vulkan with some hacks on, so with this game and the harder to emulate stuff, you might have to turn frame skip on. I was really hoping we could get full speed with this. So in the end, is it worth picking this Chromebook up for $98? Well, it's really up to your use case scenario. You saw what it could do. It's not great for 3D gaming. It does have AC Wi-Fi built in, so we can do some cloud gaming if you're into that. Web browsing, video playback, document editing, and emulation up to PSP works great on this little thing. So yeah, I think for some people, if you're on a limited budget or you just need a secondary device to throw in your backpack and not really worry about it, then this could be a really great deal. I would like to test out the Linux side on this thing. All I need to do is go through and enable it. I kind of got an idea of what kind of performance we can expect out of Linux apps, you know, given what we saw here with Android. And it's not going to be a super powerhouse, but we could still get some stuff done. So if you're interested in seeing what we could do with Linux on this Chromebook, let me know in the comments below. And remember, Prime Day is coming up. We're going to see a lot of these lower-end Chromebooks on sale. I'm not sure if they're going to get down to the $98 price tag like this one here, but I'm sure there will be a few that come really close. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more, maybe pick one of these Chromebooks up now. I will leave a link in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.